difference is between you and me? I make this look good. Ha, what's up? It's your scalp sergeant major. I hope you guys are ready to do a little PT. And I don't mean physical training. I'm not going to put you in the front stop leaning rest. We're going to be doing a little pip training today. I'm excited. Woo! Yes, I'm excited to bring you this third and final module that we're going to put the entire system together with full circle scalping. That's going to be our next module. But for right now, we're going to deal with the one last piece of the puzzle, and that is PIPO scalping, price in, price out. If you haven't already grabbed a pen and paper, um, <laughs> whose videos have you been watching so far? Come on, man. Here's the disclaimer. Educational purposes, okay? Take everything I say with a grain of salt. So here we go. All right. Acknowledgements, acknowledgements. Same old, same old. Uh, but for this method in particular, uh, not really a lot to do with anybody in particular. This is just something that, uh, this is just a common method that I found that we're going to integrate as kind of the last little piece of the puzzle. Like I said, we're going to put it all together in the next module. But for now, we are going to talk about people scalping a price in price out that little intro video a good example of exactly what we're going to be learning today we're going to talk about how we're going to take some quick scalps when price goes in and out of our EMAs and what we'll be doing as far as taking profits closing positions uh, had a couple really good examples there of just having trailing stop loss and uh, yeah let's get straight to it like I said, I'm excited because once we finish this up, then we can put it all together and do our final, 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 complete, complete module, which is going to be full circle scalping. Time frames we're going to be working in, again, the M15 and the M5, it's going to be completely at your discretion, which you want to use. Use them both at the same time. It's going to be the same result, basically. We're going to be using the same EMAs, the same SMA as last time, and that's all but we're also going to be doing some live trading and when we do I'm going to show you how a little glimpse at how we're already going to start to be putting everything together and using them uh, to form one complete method of scalping okay additional resources same as before I'm telling you this last one is going to be quick because I, there's really not much for me to explain on this method but I wanted to include it in what we do because there will be times when this method will give you a, a clear setup to take a quick scalp. And so I would be remiss, remiss miss, if we did not include it as at least one of the tools that we have in our toolbox. Not going to use it very often, but when we do and we catch a nice runner, it's mm, going to be beautiful. So technical breakdowns really we're just gonna go through the quick concepts I mean concept <laughs> involved I mean it's so so very basic rules of trading this method like I said all we're doing is price in and price out it is there's no subjectivity or guesswork to this method it either it's closing above the S the EMA or it's not there's no you know you don't have to read the charts really at all other than where did price close? Did that candle close above or below? Okay, I'm going to get in. And then we're going to talk about risk management, which is going to be very important in this method because this is a wild one. Okay, this, I don't like to lean very heavily on this method because I'm going to tell you, 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 out of all these three methods, you will take the most losses out of this method. And I'm going to put that out right up front. You will take more losses with this method because it's so basic you know it's it's not a it's a not a very refined you know tip of the spear sharp as a scalpel type of a method this is you bull in a china shop you know big warhammer swinging wildly club and ogres type of a, a method i mean you're just going in just slashing left and right hoping to grab some pips and you're going to take some bumps and bruises along the way so I need I want you to be mentally prepared for that this is not one of those um, high probability type of trades but 
it can help us if we use it in the correct way. It's like my disclaimer for you. So all we're looking to is react to trades. We're looking for EMA breaks. That's it. Basic. All right. So we're looking for price to break above. So if we have our EMA stacked in the correct order, 10 above, let's, let's talk about an uptrend. 10's above the 14, 14's above the 50. We're looking for price to break below the 14 and kind of range in between the 14 and the 50 and then break back up through the 14. That's when we're going to take our trade. That's, a, that's, in a, that's in an uptrend in a bullish market taking a buy. It'd be the opposite for a sell trade in a bearish market, obviously. We'll do that in our live trading. We'll show the, the difference between both. And then we have an option on our exit to take our exit when the price breaks in through the 10 SMA, which can be our early warning system, or we can wait for it to break completely through the 14 EMA. That's going to be your choice. You just need to decide what you're more comfortable with. And then I'm going to show you how if we if we pair that with our EMA scalping that we already learned in the last module, we can actually ride these these trends if you catch a really good trend for quite a lot of pips with your running position after you've already closed and secured your first position of profits. So, oh, that's okay. Trading plan. Again, I know you guys are sick of hearing me say it. I don't care. You need a trading plan. But that's going to be your safety brief for the weekend. Short, sweet, to the point. So, main concepts, EMAs, we already know them, love them, use them. Crosses, I already learned about them. Price breakouts, you already know them. And that's why I told you in the last couple modules, these are going to get progressively quicker. This one's going to be the quickest one of all. I mean, we are just going to get straight to live trading because when you see it in action, it's, it's really not much for me to explain. You just take the breakouts. That's it. So, again, um, I think we have a duplicate slide. Technical breakdown. It's really nothing technical to this. You know, this is not a technician's method. But the rules are 14 and 50 are going to be a lot stronger when they're above or below the 200 EMA. So, and that's actually going to be a hard and fast rule. You will not take... Um, like magnet trades with this method we will in when we put it all together but for this method I'm not taking breaks between the 14 and the 50 um, as like an EMA magnet trade and if the 14 and the 50 are above the 200 we're only looking for buys and if they're below the 200 we're only looking for sells and that is going to be a very hard and fast rule um, take an entry once price obviously crosses above or below the 14 it must cross and close and then recross with a completely separate candle I mean I think that'd be pretty obvious like you can't if it crossed and then uncrossed you'd be getting just a wick anyways so fairly obvious rule there take two positions when we enter set one for our five or ten pip take profit Today, since we're if you're on the M5, I would suggest five five pips. If you're on the M15, like we will be today, ten pips. It's a good uh, good rule of thumb. So we're only going for that maximum with our first position. Our second position, we're just going to let it accumulate as many pips as we can possibly grab. So we've got two positions. One we'll call conservative, and one we'll call excessive greed. <laughs> That is our Gordon Gecko position. We're trying to grab as many pips as humanly possible with that. So, again, be mindful of any high impact news, and we'll be on our way. So, here's a just a, a rough example of what we're talking about. We have the 200 EMA way up here. Yeah. Then we have our 50 EMA. We've got the 14, and then this purple line. It's going to be red in the live trading, but on this example it's purple so we have our candle break th through and this is what I mean by between the 14 and the 50 it breaks up and then totally separate second candle this closes 
second candle breaks back through and closes you have to wait for the close do not enter on a wick especially on the 15 minute time frame because it can do anything and then enter then we're gonna exit here would be probably a break-even position where you exit as soon as it crosses the 14 EMA we get another uh, another entry here this is actually just the confirmation candle we'd enter on this candle write it down and again you're gonna probably hit 10 pips this is the exit we're talking about for our second position that we're letting run so you hit your 10 pips secure the bag you're already at break even so whether it hits the break even stop loss or crosses the 14 you're out of the market another entry here hit our 10 pips then we have our run here it crosses the 10 before it crosses the 14 this is why I say I like to use the 10 as our early warning system to go ahead and get out the trends probably gonna change and here a good example of yes it does end up changing and so we probably grabbed an extra maybe five pips here before it ended up crossing the 14 and well that's what we're about we're about grabbing every last little pip that we can out of our scalps risk management it's gonna be the same as we've had with all the rest of our um, all the rest of our uh, scalping methods this one's gonna be more uh, an, a hybrid of we gonna have a, we're gonna have a 10 pip stop loss set when we enter the position okay so like we had the, the rigid 10 pips with hyper scalping then we had a mental stop loss with the EMA scalping now we're kind of mixing those two methods together where we have a rigid 10 pip stop loss on both the positions initially when we hit our 10, 10 pip take profit then we move up to break even and then we use that mental stop loss for our runner if it doesn't hit the break even stop loss we exit um, when it crosses either the 10 or the 14 EMA totally up to us either way though we're never gambling more than we're like we're never risking more than we're, we will win and we're always using just a very standard mathematical equation for profit and loss where in the end we always want to be on the winning side of our, our P&L statement or our profit and loss statement we want to be in profit at the end of the day okay and I mean that's it that's as that's as quick and down as dirty and as and down and dirty as I can get it I think that's a record was that that's, we're about at 16 minute mark and that's all I really need to explain to you about that like I said this is gonna be a quick explanation so let's jump right into the live trading and we will take a look at how this method works in real time okay let's go ahead and get the simulation going um, yes and let's see here let's do a different month uh, maybe end of the week yeah it looks good all right let's get started okay so we can already see we've got the 14 underneath the 50 EMA kinda intertwined with the 10 SMA right now so what we're gonna be looking for is price is already below the 14 speed this up a little bit so what we're gonna want is to see price break up through the 14 just based on market conditions right now all we're looking for is a, a breakout for a sell so we want to see price break up through that and then uh, we will look to take a sell off of that all right speed this up a little bit faster Oh, I almost forgot. A little 
music in the background, break up some of the doldrum. Although I tell you, the first mentor that I ever uh, learned from, I say, and I use that learn loosely, um, he used the same hook, the same musical hook in the background of all of his videos. Every like every 15 seconds, it was the same music hook, and I oh that thing used to get stuck in my head so badly. I tried to get a, a couple different tracks for you guys. I didn't want to make you guys listen to the same music as in the last two videos, or else it might drive you crazy trip as well. So, okay, we're starting to get a breakthrough of the 14, and this is what we want. We want to see price break through and completely close above the 14. Then we'll wait for it to break back through. Obviously, price in. It needs to go in the 14, and then come back out the 14, and that's where we will take our first entry. We're going to be using uh, full lots on a $10,000 account. We're going to be using 10 pip stop loss, two positions, and letting one run. Here we go. See this break right there. Okay, so this is going to be our first position. Let's go ahead and take a uh, see. And let me set the stop loss. Ten pip stop loss. We're looking for a ten pip pick, take profit, and then if we hit ten pip take profit on uh, the first one, so let's do one sell and then one sell with zero, and see how that goes. Oh, okay, so we already had it break back in and you'll get a lot of this a lot of breakout break in like false breakouts There's nothing wrong with that Okay, well we have it's like one pip That's fine. We'll take that But stick to those rules if it breaks back in don't try and get it to break back out again and all that just take your couple pips and Wait for the next breakout Okay Spoke too soon so we need to pull this back a little bit. We don't know if that's going to close for sure yet or not, but we do know that price has broken back out again. So again, we're going to take one sell with no take profit, one sell with a 10 pip take profit, and let price do what it do. If we're lucky, it would just be a wick, which it was. Price loves that 14, I'm telling you. getting some good movement if we get this take profit hit all right so our first position is good now we're just watching this and if we get a close above the 14 or a close above the 10 we'll exit our second position but right now and I'm sorry let me uh, let me pause this so right now we should uh, move this up to break even Let it keep going because we want now we're in a risk-free trade now any of the pips that we make are completely risk-free because if it hits break even there's no loss to us whatsoever so we took about maybe a two pip loss on the first position we just made that back with that second 10 pip take profit and we've got a risk-free position on the next one now this is where you can if you so choose put a trailing stop on a position but it's completely up to you I'm just gonna let these run as long as it's risk-free I don't want to get stopped out early I want to wait for it to go back inside of the EMA so that I can show you how if we catch a decent one which this one looks like it's starting to become a pretty decent runner that 
it's just better to let the market do what it's going to do. Oh, I'm liking that. is that by the way that to the EMA see how that's about 13 away from the EMA so if you would have taken this position for a buy back as like a magnet trade you know that could have been a possible trade you also see here where we're getting these pins to the 14 that goes back to what we learned in the last module where the 14 acts as resistance and when we get pins like that that's also um, a, a signal for us to enter a scalp so you can see how we're starting to tie all of this together. Right here, this would have been a support, or a, yeah, support zone that got violated here, and we would have taken this for another scalp. All of these methods, I'm telling you, when we put them together into the full circle scalping, are just going to be dynamite, just dynamite, because you're gonna be getting, you're not gonna have to rely on one single indication to take a scalp you're gonna have confluence between multiple different indications telling you this is going to be a high probability trade look at that it just it keeps going I like that now here you see the SMA pulling away from the 14 this is where we start to get some of that separation where if it closed back inside of the, the 10, then we might think about closing our position early and exiting because this is pips. You know, that's an extra, that's a five pip difference between it breaking in, in the 14 and breaking in the 10. Let me slow this down a little bit. Okay, so we still don't have a good clean close above or below either. This is just a little shoulder tap. If this candle closes above, that would be a good example of when we'd want to exit early. But I'm just going to, I'm only going to exit on the 14 just for this live trading. So this doesn't count right here because this was a shoulder tap that pulled the SMA down to it as opposed to like this looks like it's about to close legitimately above the SMA. No, nope. still closing below. So I mean, we're still staying in this trade. We're still letting it run. Now the trailing stop would be very useful if because this is a good three or four hours worth of trading that if you don't have the time to sit and watch these trades, then either just close your position out or put a trailing stop loss on it and call it a day. So right here, that candle, that's an early 10 SMA close. Hold on. And this, that's, uh, that's our 14 close. So that is where we will exit that position. 39.5 pips. That's a good runner. Yeah. Close that. All right, let's let price keep going. So now we have a break. This is a break inside the 14. So let's see if we can get it to break below again. And we'll take another entry. And it's just, that's all we're doing is we're just taking breakouts of the 14 and then exiting on our 10 pip take profit being hit and then also on it breaking back inside the 14. So like I said, I mean, this is a, this is not a high probability setup trading method. You know, it's a very blunt force trading method, but it's, it's just another tool that we're going to add to the arsenal. So I just want to see, I want you guys to see how it works on its own. And then when we add it in, you're going to see how it complements what we already do. This is good. Hold on. Let me slow this down. It 
looks like we're definitely going to have an entry here. I don't see it pulling all the way back. Going, going bullish. You never know. The market has a tendency to do strange things. If it did go bullish, and that would, I'd almost have to take a buy at that point and just do a magnet trade up to the 50 EMA because a long wick like that just got to trade those there we go okay so we did we had a nice bearish close below the 14 let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and enter so again we have a, a 10 pip sell and our runner and when it hits 10 pips then we will um, we will set it for break even I think I can actually do that ahead of time. Let me look at that on our next trade. It looks like the market is struggling. Oh, stopped out. That's all good. Like I said, this is about a 50-50 win-loss ratio. Maybe not that bad, but um, it's just like I said, this is just something that we're going to be adding to the arsenal. It's not something that you want to trade just on its own merits. But I want you guys to become familiar with just what the concept is by itself of price in, price out. running we need now is a break below the 14 and we could have ourselves another entry one if we get a nice close below. Nope, just a wick. This is why you don't ever jump the gun on a trade trying to get a couple extra pips. Wait for that candle to close. I can't stress that enough. Wait for that candle to close because it, like it's just doing now, it could, it could get rejected on the opposite side of the 14 and you get stopped out for no reason whatsoever other than impatience. Post. Good. Alright. So we've got a sell. Again. 10 pip. Oh yeah. Uh, without the take profit. In order is 10 pips in profit. Move stop loss to 0 pips profit. So that is our break even. Okay. So we'll take that sell. And then our secure the bag position will have no break even because it'll already have hit take profit. Yep. Let's do it. Okay, we have a break above, so we don't wait for it to hit our stop loss. If it breaks even slightly above when we're in a position, not not necessarily to open a position, but when we're in a position and it breaks above like that, go ahead, just take your loss. Boom. And carry on, soldier. But this does also count as a break above, so if we get to break back below on the next candle or the candle after that, then it could be a legitimate entry. 
get those pips back. And, yeah, maybe? Yep, that's exactly what we got. Okay, so we've got uh, our regular cell and our runner runner. And let's go ahead and let it run. Let me reset something real quick. We've got our Daybreaker coming up. So depending on where we are in the trades, I think we've got enough time to probably run through another day. I want to do, I want to get enough examples in. I know you guys grab the concept, but I want you to see how you will lose, but your winners will make up for the losses on something like this. Okay, good. So we got our first position. Take profit was hit. Nice and quick. Our stop loss got moved up to break even. Now we are in a risk-free trade. And looks like price is starting to get away from us. And that is always a good thing when we're in a risk-free trade. So as price pulls away, we should see the 10 and the 14 separate out. And that's what gives us our early warning signal to jump out. So, we shall see. Let's see what price does here. So we've got the 10 SMA coming down meet our price action candles the 14 is kind of pulling up because it's going to be a slower moving average you know these indicators are lagging indicators but not the way that we use them because we're not using them as a predictive indicator most of the time we're using them as a reactive indicator and it's, it's important that you understand the difference between that I mean there's a reason why people don't use these indicators to predict where price is going to go because they lag. So if you understand the nature of an indicator, you can use the indicator. Okay, so here we go. We've got our cross above the 10. Okay, so if this can, this is where our first exit would be. This is our conservative exit. This is the gimme all the pips exit. So now we're going to wait and see if it gets rejected off the 14 and gives us a couple more pips. Before the end of the day daybreaker here, we got about 45 minutes left, or probably an hour, because we've got about four candles left, including this one. Or if it breaks above the 14, then we're going to close out, which would be nice, because I don't like to hold scalp trades. Oh, we did get a rejection. Look at that. I don't like to hold scalp trades overnight. Well, look at that. Hold on. Okay, so we did get a, a rejection at the 14. Now, that's a good example of sometimes why you might not want to exit early. This is a very secure, safe exit, though. There's no guarantee that this 14 is going to hold it back. But we did get a rejection at the 14, so we'll take that, and we'll wait until it comes back and closes. Now, I don't like to hold trades overnight or into the next Asian session. I don't like paying swap fees, <laughs> which is that fee that you pay if you hold a trade going into the next Asian session. But... Um, for the purposes of this training simulator, we'll just go ahead and let this run until it breaks through the 14. Slow this down. Looks like we might be getting that right now. Yes. All right, so we have our, our break, our close. Um, and if you look, we had all this, but this is almost 
what? Only four pip difference between that 10 SMA break. So, yeah, it's an extra four pips, but uh, you can see how close that was. And we're ending up paying that four pips in swap fees. So, that's why I say the 10 SMA, it's, as a rule of thumb, it's just the best time to go ahead and get out. Because overall, it's just, it's just better. All right, let's wait for our next. Um, so we have our break above. Price is in. Let's wait for price to come back out. And we'll take another trade. Now let's see, we're about at the 41 minute mark right now. 40 minute mark. Let's see if we can get one more day in of, of this type of trading and then we'll add it all up and see where we're at. Or if not a whole day, let's at least just get like maybe, you know, at least one or two more trades in. I don't want to make this video extremely long because I'm sure by now you're like, I got it, Ryan. Price in, price out. It's not rocket science. But I just want, I just want to show you how it works on a live chart. It's all theory until you start putting it, putting actual trades on. And then somehow it just doesn't seem to work out the way that you thought it was going to. But so far we are up pretty handsomely, I think. All right, are we gonna get a break here? Yeah, those two runners that we caught, just really nice. So we have this break. I don't like to. Um, I don't like to take trades that are just just barely out like this. So let's wait until the very next candle closes, and then we'll take that one. As long as it's not like a huge, you know, bearish engulfing. Yeah, that's not that's not too bad. So uh, we'll put on our sell with uh, zero pips and break even, and then we'll do our. 10 pip sell. Oh, I've had my lot size is the wrong size this entire time. I've just been trading micro lots. That's alright though. Still be able to see what the final pip count is and then you can do the math in your head. Oh, I'm sorry. I am very sorry. I wasn't even paying attention because I was looking at how I'd already messed up. So, we had a break. Actually, right there. So one thing I like about this simulator is that you can rewind. You can't do that on a lot of them. And so, let's do our cell. And our runner. And let it go. trades in and then we'll call it a day. Alright, 
good. So we got, uh, we got a little of, the best, little of the best of both worlds there. So we had our our 10 pip take profit hit, but we also had our break even hit, which is a shame because <laughs> now it looks like price is uh, pulling away from us. But that's okay. Any any trade that you can pull 10 pips off of is a winner. So if you were trading this and you only had one trade go your way that hit your 10 pip take profit and your runner hit break even, if your goal for the day is 10 pips, I mean that's it, you're done. Uh, if your runner had a, a 10 pip trailing stop on it and then it got stopped out you know, 20, 25 pips down the road, that's 20 pips for the day. And that's all off just one scalp trade. Oh, that is a shame. Look at that. It is really... But if we look, this is where the other methods come in. Because look at this pin. This pin. This pin. These are all entries for our EMA method of EMA scalping. Even though this had hit our stop loss, we would take another position here because we know that this is a... You know, it got rejected off of our dynamic support resistance. And then... This would be an easy 10 pips and another uh, position that would probably get stopped out. Then we'd enter again, you know. So putting all these methods together, it's really going to all, you know, become crystal clear next module as we add all these different elements in and use them in conjunction with each other to get just the most high probability setup scalps uh, that we can. You know, because when we add in the support and resistance levels, this supply and demand zones, then we use the EMA as our dynamic support and resistance and price breaking through or getting rejected off of it as our extra confirmations, that's gonna be, God dang it, <laughs> I talk too much. That's what's going to bring it all together into what I'm, I'm going to be talking about, which is full circle scalping. So let's take our cell. Cell. Ah, stopped out. And this is a, I mean, that's a good example why we don't use this just as a standalone. Oh, back that up. Actually, let me see if we can get a little better close. Like I said, I don't like to take those particular ones. Yeah, I'll take that though. You put two together, you've got this doji and it's completely underneath the EMA. So let, let's do this. This will be our final one. Sell. And. Alright, let's let it go. Take profit hit and stop loss hit. All right, that's that's about enough. I think you guys get the idea. So let's look at the statistics that we pulled up. So on micro lots, obviously, it's going to be a little bit less dollar wise, but that is 55, 56 pips that we pulled off of just from doing the peepo scalping and just sticking to our price in price out rules. So that's not bad, not bad at all. So you imagine we put this all together with the other two modules that we've, we've already learned and 
this next module is just going to really open your eyes to the like I said what we can do in the market when we use all these concepts together so again that being said I'm Ryan ZenFX thanks for joining me if you can please give me a like on this video if it helped you in any way if you enjoy the content please sub to my channel hit that bell icon so you can get uh, notifications when I put out other videos and other content and as always, let's get these pips. <laughs>